Cameron, uh, hey, uh, so I have your swing videos here. Um, I'm just going to show you the down the line view first. Um, so this is what we we're talking about playing here real quick. And it, I wouldn't worry about this too much because what you're doing, what I have you doing right now with um, holding those wrists and not letting them get um, floppy is um, actually putting you right on plane. So uh, anyway, if we think about this plane, this red line right here is a three-dimensional line that goes towards us and away from, right, away from us, um, straight towards the target. Um, that's what we want to keep our club going on during the entire swing. So if we take a look here, uh, we notice in the backswing you're absolutely right on, us, on it. That's telling me that you're turning your shoulders properly and you're not doing anything strange like opening the club face with your wrist or closing it down or anything like that. And you notice we get just a hair above it <clears throat> as we go forward into the swing but, um, or, or further into the backswing. But I wouldn't worry about this. This looks really, really good here. And as you do it, just naturally, uh, as you get better at it, just naturally your body's going to keep it right on plane further into the backswing. So what we have going on here looks really good. Um, now, we did notice um, that you do pull it once in a while. So this is really interesting to see now that um, we went on the course and noticed that you pull it once in a while, even when your aim's really good. So what we're seeing here is you go up quite nicely on it. You get a little above it, but we do a little move right here. And just this little move that you see from here to here, and let's even go a couple more frames, pushes us, in essence, above our plane line. And that means that the club is going to be coming from over this direction here, um, over to here. So that's going to make the ball shoot kind of over to the left, um, over that direction, rather than if the club, and let me go ahead and just put another swing for you to see here. Let's, um, where we have a down the line swing. Here we go. We'll look at Freddie because he almost overdoes that move that we're talking about. So we'll put his plane line here. This is Fred Couples here. So he's above it, but what you'll notice is he drops it in. So he starts right here, and then he drops it underneath it just a little bit. So that tells us that he's, for, so from here to here, see how he drops down? And if we look over on the left, we drop up just uh, just a little bit. And that's enough to pull it. So Freddie's going to hit a little bit of a, just a little push out that way. And we're going to be going over here, we notice, with that arrow a little left. Um, so that's that difference. Uh, for, for right now, don't worry about it. I think it'll should just cure itself, but that tells us um, why we're hitting a little bit of a pull once in a while. Um, and for you, you know how to fix that. You're just making sure as you come through that the club, instead of going over this direction that we see it go, that it's going to go a little bit straighter over that direction. Okay, so I'm going to clear this stuff up now, and we're going to look at the swing from the front. And this is really what I would say is probably the most important thing to look at for us. So, and we can pretty easily see it, um, what we're working on from the front. So, um, here we have this really nice angle between your arm and your club, and it stays really nice and straight here at address. And now we just go back a little farther, and we start seeing about this point in the swing where the wrists pick up just a little bit early. And now they're really picking up. And so that means that we're cocking our wrists a little bit too much into the backswing. And then as we get farther into the backswing, they overcock. And actually, uh, that's doing two things. Um, it's opening up the club fa face, and it's uh, that makes you have to time the club face open or close. And it's making it harder for us to get back to the ball at the proper angle. So we can hit some thin shots sometimes and we can hit some fat shots, and we can hit sky shots, so hide those shots that you sky on the driver sometimes. And really all that means is when we pick up the wrist that we're coming down too steep 
onto the ball. So there's our, our little arrow, and when we come too steep, we can top it, hit it fat, or um, we see a lot of hitting it thin. So what I what we have you doing is really trying to hold those wrists. So this is one of the the first swings that we're doing on the range um, before we really started holding those wrists, and that's making your your wrist too active, your arms a little too active. And when we see your your best swing, see this next one, how this one was, we actually see that you finish more like this actually, more with your arms straight. And so it, to me, this is a really massive difference. Um, let's get rid of that over there. Um, when you hold it straight, and this even this swing compared to the last one is quite a bit better. We don't see the club. Um, is cocked in the backswing. This one's a little over cocked still, but um, not as much as the last one. So really, really focus on holding onto those wrists, keeping that club face square. And it might feel like it's locked for a little while. It might feel like a three-quarter swing, but that's our goal. And if you ever get off, just go back to hitting some chips and really focusing on holding that wrist right in place and not cocking it, especially not cocking the wrist backwards or bending the wrist backwards early in the backswing. That's one of the major things that makes us hit a little thin or a little fat. And this one picked up a little early. But you held it real nicely, you see here, um, about to this point into the forward swing. So that's really good. Now, um, let's let me show you just one model here just so you have a really good kind of idea. Let's see who we're looking at here. Um, this is Nick Price. Let's see how Nick Price does. You notice Nick really does a nice one-piece takeaway. He does have a little wrist cock in the backswing, but again, he's not getting to parallel, so he's not overcocking his wrist. Now let's see his follow-through. Hold it really nicely into the finish. And that holding that wrist allows you to do that. Um, so now um, I'll just keep this up for a second and let's talk about what you're doing in putting. So we're just going to keep putting really simple. I like um, your setup looks really good right now, just a really natural, athletic kind of setup. Um, but what we had you doing for putting is keeping the sternum square to the target. So the sternum isn't turning back and forth. And the reason I say the sternum is because anytime we start turning our body or turning our shoulders, uh, then we see the sternum move. So if we keep the sternum square, that means during putting that we just have that one dominant arm that happens to be your right arm for you and that is moving back and forth. And that really simplifies the stroke. And so since putting, we're not trying to hit it 300 yards. We we're just trying to hit short little putts, roll it across the ground. We don't need that kind of torque that we get or that kind of speed that we get by turning our body. So we're just using just that one arm, just from the rotator cuff in your arm, that one little ball joint right there, holding the sternum square, moving the arm back and forth. Now when we start to add that left hand, one of the things that we start to see is that for most people, including what you're doing right now, um, it starts to turn the shoulders again, especially when we keep the arm straight. So I, I, again, would suggest putting with that one arm, really getting good at that, especially during your practice sessions, grooving that in. And then when we do put that left hand on there, we're making that passive to the dominant arm, which is your right arm. So that left hand is passive to the right arm. And if you want somebody to watch you while you do this, um, you should have them watch and watch even one of the buttons on your shirt that that's not moving really at all that should stay completely stable during the entire stroke so to me those are the two major things for you to work on keep those wrists really silent during the entire swing so they're not getting overactive hitting at the ball or cocking too early in the backswing and then two for putting really keeping that sternum silent 
and not letting it rock and back and forth, just keeping that one dominant arm as the dominant force during your putting stroke. So from here, like I was saying um, right before I let you go, um, this is I'm sending you a video over the V1 um, software. If you go on the iPhone store, you can download the V1 app for free, and you can go through that and find Cahill Golf um, is the academy in there. And then you can find me as an instructor. And so anytime you're practicing, feel free to take a video. You can send it to me. And um, usually I can get back to you pretty quick. Um, you know, worst case, 24 hours. So, um, And you can send me as many as, of those as you want. And um, I'll get back just with what I'm doing right now with an overview of what we're doing and um, keep you right on track. All right. Thanks, Cameron, for coming. And um, hopefully we'll see you again next year. All right, bye.